I got these two marshmallows, but listen, y'all can't eat them until mommy and daddy come back. Okay? Don't, don't, you can't eat them until we come back in the room. So don't touch them, okay? I'll touch them. I'll be back. You eat them when we come back, okay? Chocolate. 
Look, look, look what I have. It's candy. Okay, leave them right here. Look at me. Look, Amos. Wait till I come back. Okay. Don't eat them. Don't eat them. Wait till I come back. Okay. When I come back, you can have them. Okay. Wait. <laughs> Amos, wait. Wait. When I come back, you can eat them. Okay. You didn't wait. Why you say? Nothing. All right, look. Don't eat those until I get back. Okay. okay? Don't eat them. Okay. Quiet. Don't touch them either, okay? Get Hi. back. Don't touch them. Don't eat them, don't touch them, okay? okay. When I get back, you can have them. Okay? Right. okay? Is that like a challenge? Don't, them, don't touch them. Okay. Dun dun dun. Hey, my turn. Slam, Did you eat him? Uh, uh, Did you touch yeah. him? No. You didn't. Look, okay, look. I have a treat, but wait a minute. Mm. Hold on, wait a minute. You, you can't have it until mommy gets back. Uh. I have to go potty real quick, and then when I get back, you can have it, okay? So wait. Uh. Okay, wait until mommy gets back, okay? Okay, I'll be right back. Wait a minute. You didn't eat one? No. Nope. I was watching her whole okay, time. Okay, you can have one. Hey sis, me and, me and Bubba are gonna be right back, okay? okay. I'm gonna give you this candy. You can't you can't eat it until me and Bubba get back, okay? Okay. Don't, you gotta wait till we come back. Don't eat it, okay? Okay. Alright, we'll be right back. All right. Stay right there. Don't touch the candy until okay. you see us, okay? How is it? Did you eat any? No. Oh, you didn't? It's kitchen. Okay. All right, did you guys enjoy those videos? I know I sure enjoyed them. And you'll have to send me a message and let me know how many that you guessed correctly on whether they were gonna eat the candy or not eat the candy. Make sure, parents, you send me those messages. I'd love to find out. 
Well, that's just a little hint of one of the fruit of the Spirit that I'm going to be talking about today. As you know, we have already been talking about the fruit of the Spirit, and that is found in Galatians 5, verses 22 and 23. And so far, we've talked about, but the fruit of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. And then today we're going to cover the last three, which if you are reading in your Bibles, you can read with me and we find out. Do y'all want to read them with me? The next ones are faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. It took a whole lot of self-control for those children to resist that candy or marshmallows or chocolate or whatever it may have been. And I know they wanted to eat it because if somebody sits candy in front of me, what do you want to do? I know I want to eat it, but we're going to be talking about what it means to have the fruit of the Spirit, self-control and faithfulness and gentleness. Well, I'm going to start off with the first one, and that is what? That is faithfulness. Does anybody know what faithfulness means? Well, I'm going to do a little word study on you, and if you look at the end of the word, at the end of the word, there is something that we call in English and in grammar as a suffix, and that is something that is put at the end of a word. Well, the suffix at the end of faithfulness is ness, N-E-S-S. And we've already learned about goodness and kindness last week. Well, that N-E-S-S, -S, that suffix, stands for the state of or the quality of and then whatever that adjective is. So the state of being good, the quality of being good, the state of being kind. And this week, we're going to be talking about faithfulness. So it is the state or the quality of being faithful. What does faithful mean? It means being trustworthy. It means um, being reliable, loyal to God and His teaching. That's what it means to be faithful. Well, it's kind of like if you have a pet dog. Dogs are extremely faithful, aren't they? They do what you said. They're always there for you no matter what. They come alongside of you. They are completely faithful. Well, yes, that is a, a good description of what it means to be faithful, but I'm talking about what it means to be faithful to God and to remain in our faith and serving Him. We've already talked about what it means to go deeper in our faith, and a person that is operating in faithfulness is not going to just put their faith up on a shelf and and um, practice their faith when it's convenient or easy for them. A person that is faithful is going to be loyal to God, is going to be reliable to their faith, and they're going to go deeper in their faith and in their walk with God. Well, it's not just something that they put on a shelf and say, okay, well, it's Sunday, I'm going to be faithful today. No, the, again, this fruit of the Spirit comes from the Holy Spirit in our lives. And as we go deeper, He will help us to walk out and produce these things in our lives because we cannot do it on our own. A faithful person doesn't walk away from their faith when things get tough. They go deeper in the things of God. They go deeper in knowing what He wants them to do. It says, what did I say the definition was? It's being loyal to God and to His teaching. Another um, characteristic of somebody that is walking in faithfulness is honesty. They are going to tell the truth. They admit their mistakes. They fulfill their promises. Another attribute of being faithful and faithfulness is dependability. You can always count on them. God is always faithful, so we're to be like Him and walk out this faithfulness. We need to rely. We need to be dependable because God is never going to go back on His Word and what His Word says. Faithfulness 
is also, like I said, loyalty. You're loyal to God and to the things of God and to His teaching. You're going to be loyal to Him and loyal to others as well. I've got a couple of verses that talk about faithfulness, and the first one is Deuteronomy 32, 4. It says, the rock, his work is perfect. This is talking about God. For all his ways are just, a God of faithfulness and without injustice, righteous and upright is he. And then another one in Luke chapter 16, 10, it says, he who is faithful and a very little thing is faithful also in much. And he who is unrighteous in a very little thing is unrighteous also in much. We have to be faithful in the little things and in the big things. When we are going to do things for God, we have to be loyal to Him. We have to be reliable. We have to be dependable. If we're going to represent God and allow the faithfulness of God to move in us. So that's the first one is faithfulness. Then the second one is gentleness. Gentleness. What did I say that N-E-S-S stood for? It stands for the state or quality of being and then whatever that word is. And in this case, it's gentle. How to be gentle. I know some of you may have a younger brother or sister and when that baby came home from the hospital with your parents, they said, be gentle, be easy, be gentle. And God wants us to walk in gentleness but not just in our actions and when we're handling a little kitten or a little baby. Yes, we have to be gentle or if we're playing um, a game with a, an egg, a raw egg, you want to be gentle with it. You don't just want to throw it because it can break. That shell is fragile. And yes, we do need to be gentle with things and um, our younger brothers and sisters and stuff but what gentleness requires, it requires strength and self-control. It comes from humility, being humble, and it's the quality of being kind and careful. That's what we have to do, but not just in our actions, but we have to be gentle in our words. We have to be gentle with others. We have to um, make people feel comfortable when they're around us because that's what God would have us to do. Not for our words and our actions to be so harsh and judgmental, but that we are loving and kind. Again, it's all going back to that loving and that love, which was the first fruit of the Spirit that I described. Gentle people are not going to be people that want to argue. They're going to want to discuss. And they're going to want to be just very kind when they're dealing with people. A genuine person and a gentle person is not going to beat people up over their sins or their failures. They're going to be very gentle and loving with them and kind. Um, I know you've got to... Watch your words and your conversations with others. Your words need to be gentle with people. I know I had a um, conversation, it was a few months ago, with Pastor Al. Hey, Pastor Al, we miss you. Um, but he said something to me, and at first I was like, oh man, why did you say that? Because I was upset. And I told him that, you know, this is what I wanted to say to that person. And I was right. I was not in the wrong. And he said this to me, and I will never forget it. He said, you need to flavor what you're about to say with gentleness. And at first, I was kind of upset and mad because I knew I was right. And I wanted to say that. But that's not how God wanted me to say it. And I wasn't thinking about gentleness and I wasn't trying to be gentle with my words towards others. And it was another believer and another Christian. So even in our words, 
um, boys and girls and moms and dads, we need to walk in gentleness. We need to walk in that humility because God is gentle. He is gentle. I've got some verses and the first one comes from Philippians 4, 5 and it says this, let your gentleness be evident to all for the Lord is near. And then a second one from Titus chapter 3, verse 2. Slander no one, be peaceable and considerate, and always to be gentle toward everyone. And I know that that can be difficult because we want to be tough and we want to be hard. And a lot of times people mistake gentleness for being weak or being wimpy, but that is not it at all. It is actually taking self-control and strength and making sure that that is under control to where you walk in love and you walk in humility with others and a calmness about you. And what did I say? And a carefulness that you are being kind and careful. We could all use a little gentleness, especially right now. Maybe even in our words and, and all the things that are going on, and if you turn the news on and you see all the things, people aren't operating in gentleness. And as believers and followers of Jesus, and if we're going deeper in the fruit of the Spirit, guess what? We need to walk in faithfulness. We need to walk in gentleness right now. And even when we're stuck at home and you know we're getting frustrated, Try being more gentle with your younger brothers or sisters, not only in your actions and in your touch, but in your words and in your thoughts, because God would have us to walk in gentleness. Now, the last one, and, and I believe that this is why God kind of had this as the last one in the Bible, and it's dealing with the hard one, self control, knowing how to control yourself. That can be hard because sometimes this thing right here, this tongue, it doesn't want to operate that way, does it? And we all know what the Bible says about the tongue. It has the power to bring life or death. And we've got to be careful. We've got to exercise self-control in four areas. The first one is we've got to exercise self-control in our bodies. Realizing that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, we've got to be careful what we put into it, into our eyes that go into our heart. We've got to be careful with what we listen to. We've got to be careful with what we eat. And we've got to take care of this body because we only have one body body and it's the temple so we've got to make sure that we have self-control when it comes to our bodies the second area is our thoughts and that is so hard I just talked um, on Thursday about our thoughts and God's thoughts towards us and that the things that we're to think on we have got to be very very careful and make sure that we are walking in this self-control and allowing the Holy Spirit kind of to put a filter on our minds and to make sure that we are walking in self-control, controlling ourselves. But again, it is allowing the Holy Spirit to help us so we operate in self-control in our bodies and we operate in self-control in our thoughts and our mind, making sure that we're thinking on those things that are good and lovely and pure. So we've got two areas. The third area is our emotions. Having control because sometimes we want to just fly off the handle and we want to just become angry and frustrated with people. We've got to operate in self-control and allow the Holy Spirit in us to help control those words, those actions, those feelings, those emotions so that they don't come out, but we all go back to His Word and that we allow the Holy Spirit to move in us. The fourth area that we need self-control in is in our walk with God. And you might say, well, Pastor Angie, how do I have self-control in my walk with God? Well, another description or another, if you look in the, in the Bible translation, it'll say for self-control, it'll say self-discipline. 
Are you self-disciplined in the things of God and your walk with Him? Are you self-disciplined in your prayer time and your devotion time? Are you setting aside time to spend with Him? God would have us to operate in self-control in that area too where we are self-disciplined. And that we are making sure that we are walking in that and we are walking with Him daily. Not just when Pastor Angie posts posts the devotions or posts the services. Yes, we need to um, be involved and participate in that. But I'm talking about your daily walk with God. Your daily walk where you are praying, where you are reading, you are having devotions, you are spending time with Him, you're going deeper in His Word, you're going deeper in your faith, you're going deeper in worship, you're going deeper in service, you're going deeper in the fruit. All of those things represent your walk with God. Boys and girls, I just want to encourage you. I know it's it's really, really hard sometimes to control ourselves. Um, but the Bible says in Proverbs 25, 28, like a city whose walls are broken through is a person who lacks self-control. I've said this numerous times, but in the Old Testament, all of the cities were fortified. They were surrounded by walls in order to protect them. And it says like walls that were broken. What can happen? Enemies and anybody can get in. We've got to allow those areas and have self-control so that it protects our heart. It protects our mind. It protects our bodies. When we walk in that self-discipline and we are going deeper in the things of God, we know how to you know, use the scripture when it says that a um, a quiet an- answer turns away anger. Instead of just flying off, we have self-control because we're allowing the Holy Spirit in our lives to help control our actions, our emotions, our thoughts, our walk with Him. We've got to allow the Holy Spirit into our lives. And it's that's why it's called the fruit of the Spirit. We've discussed all nine now, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I want to pray with you and just allow the Holy Spirit to work out that fruit in your life and to produce that fruit. But it comes from your walk with God that you are spending time with Him because it's hard to... Um, know how God wants you to live and then to live it and to do it if you're not reading and you're not spending time with Him and not going deeper in the things of God. I just want to encourage you. You can't make all those fruit. You can't walk in love. You can't walk in gentleness. You can't have peace unless God is in your life and you've given Him control and the Holy Spirit is helping to produce those things in your life. Let me pray with you. Father, we just thank you that we can gather together and we can learn more about you. And Father, as we have been discussing how what it is to go deeper in the fruit of the Spirit, we just ask that you allow your word to get deep rooted down inside of us, that we go deeper in our faith, that we go deeper in the word, that we go deeper in worship, that we go deeper in your service, that we go deeper in the fruit of God and we allow that fruit to come out of us because the closer we get to you, the more we become like you, then those are the things that's the fruit that's going to be hanging on our tree, not the fruits of the flesh. Lord, we want to decrease that you increase in our lives. We want to die that you live in us and that when others see us, they see the light and the love of Jesus shining out and that this fruit will be produced in our lives because you have control over us. Father, I speak your blessings over each family And I ask that they walk in gentleness and faithfulness to you and that they walk in self-control this week because they're going to be led by your spirit. Again, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by your spirit, says the Lord. Father, we just thank you for it. And I again 
Lord, I speak your blessings over each person, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody says, Amen. Guys, I hope you have um, a great rest of the weekend and the next week coming up and continue to go deeper in God. I've got a new little song that I'm going to play for you and it says you are the light of the world and it says that we should allow, let your light so shine within us that others may see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven and that's what we want. So let the light of Jesus shine out of you. Let this fruit be what's hanging on your tree. Until next week, you guys be blessed and worship with us. See you next week. Watching Live Tree Kids. Check out some of our other videos right there, and don't forget to subscribe.